Hey everyone, and welcome to this review note. In this video clip, we're going to configure port address translation, or PAT, such that our workstations that we see over here on the left are going to access this web server simulated out on the internet. These guys are on our trusted network. And the idea is that when our PCs access the web service, the web service is going to see the source IP address as being that of the internet side interface on the router. These guys, as far as their IP addresses are concerned, are going to be invisible to the internet. I've already got my topology set up. Everything's tested. Let's get started on configuring uh, port address translation. First thing we need to do is set the interfaces up as being either inside or outside as far as NAT is concerned. Looking at my IP addresses, gigabit zero up at the top is the one that's connected to my internal or my trusted network, and gigabit one is the one that's connected to internet. I'm gonna make gigabit zero inside and gigabit one outside. Two commands for that very quickly. Change the interface config mode for gigabit zero, and then specify IP NAT and inside. Do the same thing for gigabit one and I'll make it outside. That's that part set up. Next thing that we need to do is configure an access list that's going to identify the traffic on the trusted network that we're going to allow to go through the NAT process to get to the external network. Back to global config and I'll set up my access list. Two commands involved in that. First one that we see here states that from global config, I'm gonna create an access list. It's going to be standard and the name of it is NAT NATS out. And then I have to apply my access control list rules to that or my access control entries. Here we see the one and only access control entry. We're saying we want to permit 10.106.18.0. That's our trusted network. And if you look at the wildcard, the first three octets being zero state that we must match these values here. Okay. The last octet being 255 means I'm going to ignore the content of that octet when it comes to matching. Therefore, this filter is going to match everything that is on this network. That's all I need to do to set up the access list. Next thing I need to do is configure a pool of addresses that I'm going to allow to be translated to. And in this particular case, I'm going to use one IP address, which is the one that's on the external interface of the router. I'm still going to create a pool since that's a best practice. Down the road, if we ever have to add another IP address, I can change one command and I'm done, rather than having to change several. Here's my pool created. The name of the pool, ITSS. You can see the beginning and the end IP addresses that are assigned to the pool are both the same one, and that's the one that's on the external interface to the untrusted network on my router and then NetMask that's going to correspond to 24-bit network. Last thing that I need to do is configure my NAT rule that will actually apply the translation from the internal network out to the external interface. Second command, IP NAT inside is source List is NAT NETS out. This says that the access control list named NAT NETS out is what we're going to match with respect to traffic we're going to allow to be going through the NAT process. On the output side, we identify the pool named ITSS, the one that we previously created, and we use the keyword overload, which means that we're going to have multiple IP addresses internally 
share the same IP address with respect to outbound traffic. If we did not put overload in, the translation would be dynamic and we would need a unique outbound IP address for each inbound. Next thing we have to do is test this out and make sure it all works. In order to do that, first we want to take a look at what translations we have available now. I use the command to show IP NAT translations. You can see that there's no output, which means we currently don't have any. I'm going to connect to the website that's on the web server from my two PCs, and we'll take another look at what the translation table looks like. Access to the default page from PC1. Same from PC2. Back over in our router, we'll rerun that command to show the translations. We can see now that there are actually two translations. In both cases, the outbound is going to uh, be translated to the outside interface on our router. As far as inside is concerned, we can see the difference here and here as the source IPs from our two different PCs. And again, outside, they both get translated to the same IP address. Okay. But we can see that the ports are different. That's really all there is to setting up NAT. Of course, we can have many, many more devices in here having many, many connections out to different hosts that are going to be on the internet. Hopefully this has been helpful for you. See you next time.